Good to see you again. Welcome back. This is Douglas Dennis, the Alkaline Life Coach. Today we're talking about five tips for chronic pain. Now, if you're in chronic pain, that's a serious issue. I don't wish that on anyone, but I have experienced quite a lot of that myself. And I've learned all this the hard way over years and years. So this is stuff that really works. I've tried myself and I've been practicing for the last several years. So you can be sure to take these to heart. Now stick, away, stick around until the end. I did a giveaway recently and the person should have actually gotten the package today. So I'm really excited for that. And I'm gonna do another one as well. So five tips for chronic pain. Let's get right into it right now. Hello, welcome if you're tuning in live. I will take some Q&A at the end. So if you have a question, just comment below and I'll get to it at the end. Thank you so much. All right, let me just set up my screen. So make sure the chat is working actually and the give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and everything before I get all into the five steps. I would appreciate that. And then we'll get right into it. I know there's a little bit of a lag, but if you're here live, welcome and feel free to interact. That's what the whole point of doing it live is. All right, as soon as I get a comment or thumbs up to let me know everything is good, we'll get into it. We'll get into the first one. So I hope everything is working correctly. Let me see here. Just have to make sure that I can see the chat. All right, I see someone gave one. Thank you for the thumbs up. Okay, so we'll start understanding. Here's the first one. Five tips for chronic pain. So God forbid you're in chronic pain. I know what that's like, it's terrible. I'm not gonna sob about that. We're just gonna go directly into how to get rid of it the best and most effective ways. Natural ways, of course. So the first one is to understand what inflammation is. What is inflammation? There's, this word is thrown around all the time nowadays. Anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. What does all this stuff even mean? Because I know that the people using it don't even know what it means. And how do I know that? Because I can see the inflammation from a mile away for, with some people. Here is a little tidbit. As I'm doing research for a lot of my videos, I come across a lot of different information and a lot of different cooking styles and everything. So I don't just look at vegan recipes and stuff like that. I look at everything and I was watching a cooking video the other day and this is totally related to what we're talking about. The woman cooking, I'm not gonna say their name, they were making meatloaf. If you've seen recently, I did a vegan meatloaf recipe and this was in the research for that. And this woman was mentioning, here she had a pound and a half of ground beef, which is one of the most unhealthy things you can get. Not only because it's red meat, but because that meat is not a natural animal because it's a hybrid. But we, we talk about that in other videos. But then everyone pretty much knows at this point that the cholesterol and the type of saturated fat, and, not, and that's not it. Not to even to mention the antibiotics and chemicals and all that kind of stuff, but that she, so here's a woman taking a half, pound and a half of ground beef, and then she's chopping up some bell peppers and talking about, these are anti-inflammatory. And I'm watching just smacking my head, thinking, what are people listening to? I hope no one is listening to this and taking it seriously. Because in that recipe, there were so many inflammatory ingredients that would cause pain 
and information. The reason I went on that rant is because understanding information and what it is is a huge part of how to help combat chronic pain. If you don't know what inflammation is, then what are you gonna do? You're gonna be like a blindfolded kid swinging at a pinata, just swinging at nothing. And this is what it looks like when I see people, you know, friends, people on Facebook, that are trying to improve their health, but they, I can tell that they don't even know what direction to go. They don't even have a map. They don't even know what inflammation is. So what is it? And my uncle told me this. He is a nutritionist and also a doctor. He mentioned just in one of our conversations that inflammation means, the word inflammation means inflames. Inflames. It's the feeling that sometimes it's a hot feeling, Sometimes it's a lightning bolt, stabbing feeling. You can feel inflammation in your body several different ways, but odds are, if you're feeling bad at all, it's inflammation, unless it's mental or anxiety, which that can be inflammation too. So most of people's problems are all revolving around this inflammation ordeal, and there's a ton of misinformation online so it's important not just to take my word for any of it, understanding what the inflammation actually is. Because then you don't have to use your willpower to randomly eat this and that. You can understand deep down what's going to cause pain. What's going to make the pain worse? And what's going to make it better I'll talk about too. So the, that was the first one. It's very important to understand because if you don't understand it, and unfortunately the world, and I'm not trying to sound condescending, but you can see that people don't understand this just by looking at what's going on in the world. So let's move on to number two. Now here is something you can do. Here's an action step. The first one was just raising your awareness, which is always a good idea. It's always good to raise your awareness, just like the truth is always good, even if it's uncomfortable at first. Some of this might be uncomfortable at first. Is it the truth though? And will it help you? Those are the important points. So here's the first action step, which is number two on our list of five tips for chronic pain. Cut out toxic chemicals. And I'll get more specific because some people might think, well, what even are toxic chemicals? If you listen to what I just said about inflammation and people have almost no idea what's going on as far as inflammation goes, they think that maybe that they can eat a pound and a half of ground beef and then have a flake of bell pepper and it's gonna somehow make them healthy. And that lady said about the meatloaf recipe, she said, yeah, there are a lot of health benefits. Look at all the different colors. And I'm just laughing. I mean, this is silly. It's, but it's also dangerous. People I know and people I care about are suffering from health from di all kinds of diseases, and I used to be as well. So these, this can help you get real results in your life. So how do you cut out toxic chemicals? How do you know what's toxic and what isn't? Well, we talk about this a lot on my channel. We talk about pH. What does pH even mean? This is hard for a lot of people to understand because you can't see it and you can't touch it pH means potential hydrogen, but that's almost just as vague. What you need to understand is alkaline and acid. Acid is corrosive. What does that mean? It means it'll rot and it's caustic. It'll eat away at something. So maybe you've seen rust eating away at something. Maybe you've seen a hard chemical eating away at something. That's not what you want 
inside your body. Even just because it's, you can't see inside doesn't mean there's nothing happening in there. So a good way to generally know if something is toxic or not is the pH. If it has a high pH, and we're talking natural, we're not talking about bleach or something made in a factory. That's alkaline, but that's not good for you either. That's extremely off the charts alkaline almost. So above seven is alkaline, below seven is acid. Natural things that are above seven pH will give you energy and things that are acid will take your energy away. Take your health and life away, actually. So this is very serious stuff. And it can be easily misunderstood. I can see this because of people arguing about it online. Some people argue about eating meat and blah, blah, blah. So we're not going to go into that in this video. I have a million other videos. But if you have questions about it, comment and I'll answer the questions at the end. I'll do a Q&A. Let's cut, let's step to number three and just keep going right through these. Number three is another action step you can take. This step will have a huge impact. It sounds like a small thing. It sounds like, eh, maybe no one will do it. But if you take this seriously and actually do it, it's a very simple thing. Simple doesn't mean easy, but it's very simple. And here it is. Drum roll. Cut out sugar. I was just talking about pH and acids. Well, cane sugar specifically is very acid. It is very, very acid. In fact, it is one of the most acid plants. So, so many people are, I used to be addicted to it, unfortunately, but luckily I broke free after I was already in my 30s, believe it or not. So 30 years of addiction finally broke free of that and ev most people are running around thinking, oh, no problem. Very acid, definitely, if you cut that out, you will notice a difference. And let's move right along, We're moving right along to number four. If you have any questions, comment below and we'll get to them later. Number four, this is another action step. The first step was a mental awareness shift. These other steps are action steps you can take. Both are important. It's not good to just take a bunch of action because, yeah, you can, it's like cramming for a test. You can cram and cram and cram for a test. You might know the answer for a minute, but then you forget it all and go back to your old ways. That's kind of like forcing, forcing a new way of life without the understanding. You have to have the understanding to make it long term. That's what I talk about in my program. There's a lot of this in my program for those of you that are already in it. And if you want more info on that, there's a link at the bottom of this, the description. But let's move right along to number four. This is the fourth tip on how, tips for chronic pain. Now, this one sounds pretty logical once you hear it, but are you doing it? Have you tried it recently? And are you doing it every day? That's the question to ask. Stretching. This might sound so simple, but I've lived in different countries around the world, and I've definitely noticed a very definite trend that Americans don't stretch enough, barely stretch at all. And before they exercise, they almost never stretch after exercising, which I recommend. In fact, I would recommend stretching over exercise. Most people don't understand how important stretching is, and they just go out and exercise. I mentioned this in one of my videos recently. I, a couple years ago, I got a gym membership. I've been a martial artist my entire life, and I did wrestling since when I was, even before that, when I was like five. So I'm fairly well 
versed in exercise and science. And what I saw in that time when I was going to the public gym was that no one knows how to exercise, it seems like. And I'm not trying to be condescending, I'm just trying to give some tips on chronic pain because some, of, some people are bringing it upon themselves. They're going out, and keep in mind what I talked about pH a couple minutes ago, about acid and alkaline. They, people go out and they hit the gym, and they go hard at the gym, rah! And you know, I used to be like this when I was 18 or whatever, and you know, pound out 100 push-ups or whatever without warming up, without stretching, anything like that. And yeah, when you're 17, maybe you can get away with it, but as we get older, what happens? It's not just age. I don't believe that we just get old and decrepit. No, that's not naturally happening. This is from artificial stress. We've got artificial chemicals. We've got hardcore medications people are on. We've got illegal drugs that might be artificial ones that people are on. And, you know, everything such as I touched on sugar a minute ago, all that stuff, believe it or not, is layering up inside. So whenever people go and hardcore hit the gym, what happens? When you exercise really hard, your muscles release lactic acid. What's the key word there? Acid. The same thing happens if you eat dairy. So people eating dairy, and that's not even one of these on the list, and also working out at the gym, are going to have a lot of pain and inflammation. Definitely, I can guarantee that. I've lived that and thankfully there's a better way and I'm telling you that about that now. So when you find out about the better way, it's a good idea, a smart idea to shift over. Whoever gave me a thumbs up while I was talking, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It really helps my channel and I'm really putting a lot of effort to grow the channel this year, so I need your help, and one way you can do it is just thumbsing it up, and I appreciate it. It's free, it's easy, and it does work. It does, oh, someone else did it, you rock. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Uh, together as a team, we can achieve more, and I wanna give back to you. Uh, there's a com small community growing already, and there's some great people that have been watching the last few weeks I've done Q&As. I'm not sure who's tuning in right now, but I, I welcome you. So let's get, the, there's a couple more left. I've got the fifth one, and then I've got a bonus one at the end, number six. But I thought I would put number five in the title just because it looks like a nice, neat number. So let's get into number five. Five tips for chronic pain. This is a good one. Everyone will like this one. Maybe you cringed at some of the last tips, like, ooh, that sounds too much, too difficult, or too much self-discipline. Well, this one's really easy, and you'll feel good the whole time you're doing it, so you'll like it, I promise. Number five is, well, it's two things I included it together. Sauna and hot bath. Who doesn't love a sauna and a hot bath? Maybe if you're living in the desert or somewhere really hot, you wouldn't like it. I also recommend ice baths in my other videos, but well, there's your seventh tip. I'm loading you up with tips. We've done way more than five tips already in this video, but an ice bath helps for inflammation and a hot bath does as well. Saunas are even better, especially because in my experience, I'm pretty tall and the bathtubs are tiny, <laughs> so the sauna gets your entire body sweating from head to toe. Man, who doesn't love the sauna? Unfortunately, they shut them down during this whatever you're calling it, but that's unfortunate. So for the time being, hot bath is good. You can really heat it up there as hot as you can stand as long as you don't have a heart condition. But if you do have heart conditions, then definitely check out some of my other tips because there's definitely some priceless info that I've been sharing. 
And let's get to the next one. Everybody knows how good of a sauna is, don't they? I don't really have to talk about it. It feels so good after the oxygen gets flowing. You sweat the chemicals out. So it helps your kidneys and your liver because your kidneys and liver are stuck filtering all that toxic waste that people are eating and the companies are feeding it to you, calling it food, but they're just raking in the cash. They want money. They don't care if you're healthy or not. Sorry to burst your bubble, but once you realize that, then you can start moving on because that's an important thing you need to come to grips with is that these people, even the FDA, they're in con control of the food and the drugs. Who put these people in control of the food and the drugs? How is McDonald's legal? How is alcohol legal? And how is our cigarettes legal? It's just, I mean, if you compare it to some other things that are illegal, it just doesn't make any sense. But that's another rabbit hole for another day. If you want another video on that, comment and I can do one. Let's get to the number six, with it, which is the bonus tip, even though I've already given a couple other bonus tips. Um, this is the last one I have written down as a bullet point. So let's get into it without any further ado. The last one, this one is a very good tip for chronic pain. And I don't think enough people are trying this and doing it. Not enough people that I talk to have ever done this before or are planning to do it. And unfortunately, a lot of people I talk to are suffering from one thing or another. So this is a really good way to alleviate suffering you probably haven't tried it before, so it's definitely worth looking into. Also, I should add, I should have said this in the very beginning. Oops. I should have said this at the very beginning, but I'm not a licensed medical doctor. This is not meant to replace medical advice. And if you have your own doctor that you've been seeing your whole life, don't just uh, see something on the internet and, the, and run with it when if you have a practitioner that knows you personally. That being said, I also sometimes have to tell people that they should fire their doctor and find another one, but that's none of my business. So this is just information for you and you can talk to your doctor about it or, or that's up to you. That's just, I'm telling you that to be responsible. That being said, these things are more effective than most of the things in my, let me just say from my personal experience, that way it's not advice to you. In my personal experience, when I was sick years ago, I was chronically ill for several years. I don't even want to talk about it now. I talk about it in my other videos, but thankfully I got over it. Um, but when I was sick, I went from doctor to doctor to doctor and they didn't know jack squat. And they didn't get me any results at all. So that's my personal experience. However, there are great doctors out there. I, you know, I've heard about some that would recommend these same things. So you just gotta get lucky or you gotta hunt, hunt, them, hunt them down. The ones that really know what they're talking about. But take a look at them I would say just take a look and see are they healthy themselves and do they feel good or what are they even are they following the things that they recommend? I'm following everything that I recommend for years before I even tell it to you. So that's just my personal commitment. That's just integrity and ethics or morals. To me, it's a no brainer. But the rest of society, take note. <laughs> <laughs> and let's spread the positive message and set a good example for the future generations. Wow, there's a thought. What if everyone in the country or in the local town or in the world even was happy, healthy, and wealthy? If everyone felt really good, what would the world be like? We could all meditate on that for a few minutes. 
So let me get to the very last tip I have and then I'll go into Q&A. If you have any questions, you can type them in the comments. So number six, I've been leading up to this one because I think it's the most powerful one. And when I say powerful, it can be underestimated. Do not underestimate the power of this. They talk about it in the Bible. It's ancient practice, but most people don't follow it anymore. Or they follow it, eh, maybe a little bit here and there. But I would say 99% of the people I know have never tried this before. Some of my subscribers already know what this is, but if you're new, this is, might be the first time hearing about it. It's called fasting. <laughs> what in the world is fasting? Not eating. So wait a minute, not eating? Is that serious? Are you serious? Is that, is that a health tip? How is that? When we've been hearing our whole life, eat, 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 and seeing commercials, and seeing fast food, and people are so worried if their stomach gets empty, and uh, hungry, why wait? Grab a Snickers. And everything else we've been bombarded with. Keep in mind about what I said before. Those companies are selling food. They have a bias. They don't want you fasting. They don't, they're not gonna recommend fasting, are you kidding me? That's against, that's, <laughs> that's un-American. No, I won't go that far, but I think the meat companies, the wheat companies, the corn companies, these are billion dollar, these are massive, massive, massive industries. So no wonder no one's talking about fasting. Hey, remember Jesus? He talked about fasting and they just kind of brushed over it in the Bible, I think because they know they already were doing it. But nowadays, we need to stop and go back and remember. Hey, remember they were fasting as part of the, multiple religions have fasting as part of it. Wow, very interesting, something to look into. And my theory recently, is that, and I'm just gonna drop this on you, but I talked about it for hours the other day in a live. My theory is going this way that religion, I think, originally was really about health. That was the original health care. What was Jesus doing? If you believe in him, or whatever was reported, if you don't believe, just whatever did they say he was doing? They said he was healing crowds of people. Crowds of people? Healing, exactly. So thank you for commenting. And that, don't you think that was pretty important? You know, I've been sick before and it got really bad. And, you know, once it got to the point where I th thought, once I got to the point where I realized, oh my God, I'm dying. Or, you know, someone told me, basically, that uh, I was dying. I mean, and it, like, I guess I was sick for years. But it didn't really, like, register. Because I was in my 20s, you know. Pff, what... You, you know, we're not, taught about, we're not taught about this. Someone said I look like Jesus. I don't know what Jesus looked like. I doubt he looked like me. I doubt he looked like me. But that's funny because uh, maybe I look like a painting of Jesus that uh, maybe they were predicting my coming. <laughs> I, if I think the second coming of Jesus, I think it already came actually. And I, I mean, I'm not, like, this isn't like a super belief that I'm willing to fight someone over or anything like that. I just think that Dr. Sebi was kind of like the second coming, wasn't he? He healed me, not directly even. I never met him in person, and still he helped me. So, awesome. 
And uh, Christ means the anointed one. What does that even mean? What is anointed? It's the sacred oil. What's in that sacred oil? Alkaline herbs. Alkaline herbs. Yes, exactly. I just decoded the last 2,000 years of BS for you. <laughs> Trying to simplify it, but this is hidden information, I believe. So that's why I usually don't come right out and say those last several things I said. I usually just kind of drop little bits of it, but live it seems to come out more when people are tuning in and commenting, so I appreciate that. And that's all I had on my bullet list. I'll recap them for the people that just tuned in. And I ended up talking about like seven different things, but it was supposed to be only five, so I gave you a two bonus. The first one was understand what inflammation even is. And, you know, if you missed that part, you can listen to the replay when we're done. Two is cut out toxic chemicals. A good way to know what's toxic is either is it artificial or is it acid? Three was cut out sugar and other acids. So cane sugar specifically is killing people. And, you know, melting your bones. S number four was stretch. What could be better than stretching? You know, if you're not, if you haven't gotten into it, it might be weird the first several times, but once you get into it, stretching is one of the best things. Totally recommend it. Uh, luckily, I've been doing yoga for probably like 15 years and martial arts for probably 25 years, believe it or not. I know that I don't even look that old. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the next one is sauna or a hot bath. And I'm just trying to have some fun while we're live. And the, the final last one was fasting. So there you have it. Now I have so many more tips actually, but I don't want to overwhelm people in, this is kind of just an introduction. I have an entire 12 week program that is, um, I think like 15 or 20 videos and a bunch of different written stuff and all kinds of interactive things. So if you're having trouble with shifting into the, the alkaline way, like I've been calling it, then you can reach out to me. There's a link at the bottom of the description. But try some of these tips in, that I mentioned in this video and let me know how that went. Someone just said, Hi Doug, could you do a video demonstrating some of the stretching techniques? Hello, Shaina. Yes, I got your uh, message, by the way, on Facebook, and I replied again to you. I don't know if you saw that. Um, I know you were using someone else's account. So I appreciate hearing from you as well. Um, you were the one of the winners of the last one in the live, and I, I asked you a question about that, so make sure you check that message and get back to me. Yeah, oh, it was your dad's account? That's funny that your dad has Facebook and you don't. But uh, that's kind of where it's going now, isn't it? That the young people are going, get this out of here. And then the older people are finally just signing up for it uh, now that it's already out. But I'm on Facebook, even though I have strong feelings against it. I'm on there for the purpose of communicating better with you and other people. So um, I'm on there as the Alkaline Life Coach. There's a page. I also have another page. I, I have so many pages that you would faint, but it's because I do internet marketing. So it makes sense. But that's about it for me. If you have any questions, now's the time. 
let me know and I will take your questions. If you don't have any, I'll wait a couple minutes and then I'll sign off. But I'll give you the opportunity now to ask away. And this is always interesting. We've had a lot of great questions in some previous live videos. The longest I've ever been went live is over three hours. And that video is now my uh, best performing video as far as watch time. So I appreciate you for watching that. And if you don't know, I'm one of my goals is to uh, monetize the channel, which means I need 4,000 hours of watch time. Right now I have about 1,500, and that's per year, by the way, so per 12 months. So in the last 12 months, they make sure that you're, you know, people are actually watching your stuff before they allow you to monetize it. But then, if I get monetized, I'll actually be making money <laughs> from this and I will, not only will my giveaways be better, I'll be able to raffle away some more expensive stuff, but also I have a nonprofit that I'm trying to, uh, in the process of building and it's, it's $600 just to file one, pa uh, one paperwork for that. So, pfft. I mean, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. That's, I've spent way more on getting projects started. But, you know, even though it's nonprofit, it is going to take some time, effort, and I've already spent a couple years working on it but I'm looking for some either um, people to join on board that will help me or, you know, in the future I will be raising money for that. But not probably not from you. I will probably be, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to be begging the audience for anything. I'm not planning on it. Maybe once in a while I'll do something special, but I want to, I'm focused on giving you um, not only information, I, I'm focused on information, of course, because that's really what I specialize in, if anything. And But I do want to give you material things, too, because we're in the material world. You can't totally disregard the material world. You know, I'm, I'm that flesh. Remember when Yoda grabbed Luke and said, this crude flesh... Someone asked, can you do a show breaking down different tomatoes and what that are alkaline? Sure. The, as far as I know, the only two that I'll eat are cherry tomatoes and plum tomatoes. And those are the best ones anyway. Cherry tomatoes are so good. Why would you even need another type? Organic Life, yo, what's good? Good to see you. Always good. You always bring some positive energy and good questions or good feedback. So it's always good to see some familiar people joining in. Renegade as well. Rene, Renegade. There's an accent on one of those E's. So I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Love you, man. Oh, thank you so much. I love you as well. My heart chakra. Beams of love to all my followers, <laughs> to all the to the whole world. I appreciate that. That's what it's all about, and really, that's what your health is all about. It's hard to love yourself or anyone else if you're sick. I've experienced that myself. Maybe you have a glimpse of it and then back to the old way, or a glimpse of enlightenment, and then back the old way, and then glimpse of it. Yes, you missed my five tips already. But um, in a nutshell, it was understanding what inflammation really is, cutting out toxic chemicals, cutting out sugar and other acids, stretching, sauna, and fasting. So. And I could have just done the video that quick and it would have been 30 seconds long. But who, people, 
people aren't gonna just oh some guy on youtube said <laughs> to th try fasting i'm doing it you know i need you know most people need a little bit of convincing how often should we stretch organic life asked every day definitely should should stretch every day ideally for sure do i stretch every single day no i want i sometimes i do every day for best results every day how many times daily? Well, the more the better. I mean, there is something called overstretching, but it's actually something you do. It's not really, you can get sore from overstretching, but it's not necessarily bad. So you can do a period of overstretching where you're trying to get more out of your muscle, but it is going to, you know, you wanna make sure you warm up. Let's just say that, especially in the winter, especially in the winter. I should have said that uh, before. I have hurt myself, you know, before I went alkaline or anything. Um, I've been a martial artist since I was eight. And um, that's crazy to believe. But I have hurt myself accidentally by not warming up and then stretching, like really stretching too much. And well, I had like people like, I had my friend like uh, laying on my back, someone that weighs more than me, like pushing me and uh... <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna tell you about the stupid things I've done. I'm just gonna tell you the right way. That was a few years ago, um, maybe five years ago. <laughs> I hurt myself from stretching because it was in the winter, I wasn't warmed up, and I had someone like that weighs more than me like surfing on my back. That was uh, foolish, especially the way I just relayed it to you sounded even stupider than it actually was. What type of martial arts do you do? Shina, great question. I, um, well, I have done a lot. Uh, I started out with American Taekwondo when I was a child. I did that for um, until I was, well, I got my black belt in that in um, like 2006. So that was like, wow, 15 years. I've been a black belt for 15 years. That's crazy. So now I've been a black belt double as long as I, it took to get it. So it took me seven years to get it, which is a little bit long. It sh ideally, it would take three years, but that's if you're, you know, going five days a week, stuff like that. Um, I had a little pause in the middle, so I had to come back and get reacquainted. So it, it took me uh, a long time. However, it's been most of my life now that I've been a black belt and I would recommend it not for the initial reasons I started the the you know when I was eight years old the reasons that I started is because there were some jerks at my school messing with me for one and I remember the person to this day and um, the Ninja Turtles were really popular back then <laughs> You know, to be quite honest, you know, Bruce Lee, Ninja Turtles, I mean, that kind of stuff is really cool to a child, especially, and to a lot of adults. But the, that, those are the reasons I got started was to protect myself. And, you know, because I'm an artist and a musician, really. I mean, back when I was a child, I was artist and musician as a child. Um, so I guess I was a target for people, uh, but I wasn't the tip. I'm not a typical artist either. So I'm not a starving artist or I don't believe in that. I reject it. I totally reject it. Um, however, I have been starving before, but not when I was an artist. <laughs> and 
So I, I learned martial arts to um, gain confidence and to protect myself, but really what I've gained, balance, like physical balance is priceless. You know, sli I don't slip and fall on ice. I don't fall over. I don't like just weird little, little things like that, that I'm just coordinated which I'm not, like, I'm not naturally coordinated. I'm not really, I don't want you to think that I was naturally super athletic or something. I don't think I am. I worked at it for years and years and years and years and years and years. So, you know, um, I worked at it and now I'm coordinated, finally. <laughs> so coordination is good. I mean, that can save your life if you were gonna fall on something or fall off of something or, twist your ankle, stuff like that, that maybe uh, I'm less likely to be injured because I've got balance. Flexibility is another one. Flexibility, not only in body, but in mind. Not everyone is gonna listen to what I'm saying. Not everyone is gonna be nice to me. You know, most people are not nice to me. In fact, they don't know I'm a black belt. They don't know that I could uh, hypothetically kill someone in one hit. They don't think like that. They're just impatient losers running around, unfortunately. And you know, no one's stuck like that. They can change. They can change. So, uh, I'm not, I cut people a lot of slack, even if they're undesirable at the moment. <laughs> but like flexibility is a big one because when you're capable of hurting people, you know, you don't go around hurting people and you don't, you can't go around winning arguments with your fists, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, actually, sometimes I think, sometimes I think that what would it be like if I could solve some certain things with fighting, and some things would be easier, <laughs> but I'm against violence in general. Just, uh, you know, some fun, some, some little philosoph philosophical tidbits I'm throwing out there. The mind of a warrior, an ex-warrior. I'm, I'm not really a warrior now unless I was forced to be. It's still in me though. I mean, I could, you could blindfold me and boom, I would, um, once you're programmed, you're programmed for the most part. Someone said, okay, so I didn't even answer your question. I went on a long martial arts uh, story, which is really actually fun. I would love to talk about that more. Maybe I'll do another video about it. If I can come up with a good clickbaity title for martial arts related content, I will, because it's all about that thumbnail, if you didn't know. Should we be working out during a water fast? I would say no. Just uh, even though we're, I didn't finish reading the question though. Even though we are not consuming any calories. First of all, why are people working out to begin with? And maybe before you tuned in, I did a mini rant story about how People don't know how to exercise in my, in my perspective. When I, a couple years ago, I went to a public gym and I saw the people come and go. I would go, here's what I would do when I went to the gym. And this wasn't during a water fast. So this doesn't exactly answer your question. But if I personally went to your gym, here's what you, where you would find me in there. I would be on the treadmill. And here's what I would be doing. I would be walking. I would be walking on the treadmill. That's what I would be doing in the gym. So why would you even go to a gym and pay them to go walking? If it's, if, you know, if they have a sauna, but then if the sauna's closed, then no, they tsh, ditch it. You can just walk in place at your, in your living room. I mean, 
don't give these people your money and then they're in there forcing you to not not allowing you in the sauna and everything that's a sacrilege <laughs> slightly joking but slightly exaggerating i mean um so yeah i wouldn't recommend working out the way most people work out and to get back to the martial arts question i started out with american taekwondo which is the art of kicking mostly um, and I have really long legs, so that suits me well, thankfully. <laughs> but um, then I was in Japan studying abroad, and I studied karate, and specifically wado, which is a lesser-known art, and it's mostly just for competition. And I only did that for maybe a few months, that was very, very strict as far as the rules, and I couldn't understand a lot of the rules. I was there just to, oops, uh-oh, a glitch in the matrix. My battery's running low. I'm at 51 minutes. I'll go nine more minutes until an hour, and then I'll probably sign off or the battery will die. Or I could run, if there are some really juicy questions coming in, I'll run and get a phone charger and plug it in and keep going. But back to what I was saying. Wado in Japan, and then I studied um, Wushu Kung Fu in Korea, and um, Tai Chi at that same school. I, they taught Wushu and they also taught Tai Chi. I used to go in the early in the morning and they were all like uh, really elderly people and then me, <laughs> me and my wife and uh, were the youngest people by decades, but I'm just, there's nothing wrong with that. It was fun. My favorite is Tai Chi actually. My favorite is Tai Chi, but my most experience is American Taekwondo. And anyway, what is even American Taekwondo? Well. And I'll keep this short because this could be a whole video. The original Taekwondo is not the Olympic Taekwondo that you see on TV, the popular one in the Olympics. And uh, yeah, I know this is going to make some Korean people mad, but uh, <laughs> the original guy that made Taekwondo lived in exile most of his life. And he lived in Canada, believe it or not, for most of his life. So I think American Taekwondo came from that original one. Um, so it's, it's an older style. Uh, when I was in Korea f the first time, f 10, 15 years ago or whatever it was, I studied the WTF, which <laughs> is not an abbreviation but it means the World Taekwondo Federation. That's one is the one in the Olympics but um, supposedly that's not the original one, but anyway, there's a conspiracy for you. Someone just said, I used the shower at my gym every day for like 20 minutes with hot water. They pay $300 a year and they're staying tuned for more, oh, st stay tuned for more tips. <laughs> $300, couldn't you spend that on... <clears throat> on uh, something better. <laughs> I don't know, that's not that much. I just, just uh, when I go to the gym, I just chuckle at what everyone's doing because they, they're all in their own little world and they all think they're an Olympic athlete and then they're just hurting themselves <laughs> from my experience. So stretch out before and after you exercise. If you're gonna exercise, it should be like 80% stretching and warming up. Double take? Really? Yes. So you should warm up twice as long as you exercise. And then you should cool down twice as long again. So really, you're warming up, warming up, warming up for a long time. That's the important part that most people skip and work out, which is keeping your heart rate up and then uh, cool down, cool down, cool down.
double as long as the workout if you if you think about it like that. So I hope that helps. Um, but you know, honestly, for most people, taking a walk is fine. Stretching out, taking a walk, take a hot bath, and then stretch out. Um, you can do some light cardio, like walking or rowing is good. That's one that my chiropractor recommends because there's no resistance. And also I have an old shoulder injury. I sprained my neck doing Kung Fu. So I've been beaten up a little bit and uh, been through the ringer myself. That's why I found a lot of this out is from my own pain and suffering. And I've had a lot of it, more than my age shows. So someone commented on one of my posts one time on Facebook, some nasty comment about, you're too young to know what it's like, blah, 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 or something. And they don't know my history of chronic disease in my 20s. And that, you know, some people are nasty. Why did I even mention it? You guys are awesome. That's the most important thing. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that to flatter you. I'm saying that because of your questions, your feedback. I can tell, I can tell good people, you know, from bad by the questions they ask and by the type of people they spend time with. What's your take on eating papaya while pregnant? Um, I would have to look into that. I don't, I mean, judging by your question, there must be something, I'm reading into it. Is there something with papaya in pregnancy? That's news to me. So I would, uh, would have to check that out. But let's see, I had another question coming in. Oh. So someone said, so Renegade or Renegade said 122 hours of running hot water would cost you more. Really? You have expensive water bill. Interesting. Well, that's smart thinking. Good idea. Budgeting with a purpose. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, I've lived a lot of places and some places the water pressure has been terrible. So I can see some people, you know, if the, if the gym has a super hot, powerful shower, that could be a level up for some people. For me, I'm figuring out where to build a sauna in my, <laughs> in my room. You know, there might be in a future video, a sauna right here. So if I can get away with having one indoors, um, I was shopping around for a house for months and obviously didn't find the right one. And I shopped around like the um, half of the state. And what I realized was that my current place is definitely the best place, especially for the cost. So I guess sometimes you need to spend months looking around to realize that the grass is not greener, that uh, my own place is better. But I'm trying to upgrade my kitchen and for the video's sake. But like, I'm, like I mentioned in the last video, I might actually rent a kitchen, and do a bunch of cooking videos <clears throat> just for like maybe one weekend a month or something like that. I could go and film a bunch of them and then release them through the weeks. That's just something, you know, I have an idea for if the channel gets monetized and I've got some more cash that I can test things out on the channel. I've already spent thousands of dollars on this channel and not made it back, but I'm not complaining. I'm just giving you some <laughs> right now. I'm in the home stretch. I feel like going for monetization. Will I wear my black belt? Um, well, I have it right here if you want to see it. Oh, that's funny. That turned off exactly. There's a warning out there saying there's a chemical in papaya that causes miscarriages. I don't 
personally believe it, said Organic Life. Just wanted your opinion. Oh man. Is that the natural occurring in papaya and they're just now figuring it out? Or are they saying because of an environmental factor, now they're, the current batch of papayas are, I'm curious which, man, I've got, I don't want this. I'll show you my black belt just for fun. I don't know, I mean, I, you're not supposed to show it off, but I'll show you it just for, because <laughs> you asked. Because it's right here. Well, I thought it was right here, actually. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, wait, where is it? Well, now you've got me looking for my black belt. Well, I don't want to make you wait off camera, but I did, in that minute and a half, I did find this. <laughs> so, I can't find my black belt. It's probably in my gym bag, but I have this, so this is what we used to wear. Actually, this is only for tournaments. This was not, when I, we used to spar in class, there was no headgear. We just got, it was back in the day before fancy things like insurance and everything like that. Um, I just went back to a Taekwondo school right before the, the, they shut down all the gyms. I was going again and um, they had chest protector, face, uh, one like this, but it had a face, a plastic face guard on it. And I was like, what is this? What am I, a five-year-old? I, I mean, what's the point? What's the, I mean, it's just, and they said, oh, the insurance and blah, 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 and it's not even fun anymore. I mean, you need to get kicked and punched in the face sometimes to go, it's part of the training. It's there, it's, it, it's not masochistic, it's there for a reason. You know, my master, pushed me as hard as he thought I could go. And then a little further. That's how you get better. He didn't take it easy on me. Then what? Then I'd be, I, I was there for a reason, you know? I mean, your training should be, the training should be good so that now if someone else came at me, my training would kick in and they're going to be nowhere as near as good as my master was. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a master. <laughs> and uh, a real master, not just the one that got it out of a Cracker Jack bar. Someone said there's a wax papaya produces that has a chemical called papain, papain that can cause a natural abortion. Well, that's my first time hearing about it. Um, it's only from the unripe. And your opinion is that there's a big myth. There's vegan moms eating it during pregnancy. That's strange. You know, there's so many artificial things that are bad for pregnancy that people are doing that I would start with those. <laughs> I've seen people, I don't even want to get into that. If you really want to, oh man, that's a shame. Yeah, people, things people do during pregnancy, oh wow, that's a shame. And you know, they would say, oh, well, you're a man, mind your own business. Well, pff, I was a pregnancy at one point. Hello? So, but anyway, <laughs> I'm thankful to be here. My phone is probably going to die any minute, so I'm over an hour. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for the input. Thank you for those interesting, organic life is always coming through with some interesting facts and bringing them directly to me. I appreciate that. I'm usually scouring the internet for good info. And, uh, but you know, I'm not, pregnancy is not relevant to me at the moment. However, um, if one of my clients right now were pregnant, I would probably know a lot more because I would be diving into it on their behalf. But um, I've got uh, 
right now I have, um, I filled my initial, I filled up all the clients that I was taking and I closed it off. But now that there's a new year, I'm going to start accepting clients again. Should you, someone asked, should you take a lot of CMOS and bladder rack? Oh, so oh, someone said you should take a lot of CMOS and bladder rack so, so you have a super baby. I've heard some interesting things about a mushroom baby. Um, but see, interesting note about seaweed in Korea where I used to live. Um, and when I was there, my in-laws are Korean. So I lived with that. I lived with a Korean family, which is, uh, so I know some of the more like what the families are doing and it's a, it's a lot different than when you're just around other foreigners. But at one point I was living with my in-laws and my sister-in-law, uh, had two, oh no, no, oh, another glitch. All right, it's warning me that I'm going to die, that it's going to die soon, so I'll wrap it up. But anyway, my sister-in-law had two babies while I was there, my nephews, and they, when they give birth, they load up on seaweed for a month and after giving birth. There's like a seaweed soup that they make um, that is not my favorite, honestly, <laughs> but it's just super healthy. So if you're looking to revamp your health or if you just had a baby, I mean, your body goes through the ringer when you, that's the whole point of what I'm, why I'm saying it. When you have a kid, your body goes through, uh, you know, hormonal changes, physical pain, all that kind of stuff and has to repair, has to repair itself. So that seaweed is the key. And they know about this in Asia. Pfft, bring that up in the US, no one knows about it. So very interesting stuff. Um, very interesting info coming from other cultures. Very interesting info being shared on this channel. And I've got a lot of videos that I've recorded recently and a lot of them are being edited. I just have to finish finish the edits on a few of them. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I go live because I've been going live three times a week actually. And I'm going to continue. My goal is three videos a week all year at least. And I know I'm going to do a few blitzes of, you know, probably some sometime in the year I'm going to probably do like an entire month w with a video every day. I'm going to gear up for that though because, you know, it takes a lot of work actually, but going live is easier. Um on the editing end, it's more difficult because I have to be accountable for everything I say while I'm saying it and all that kind of stuff, but it's going well so far. I appreciate all the viewers. I appreciate the new subscribers. We've got uh, someone's calling me Jesus. Oh no, that's gonna really anger some people. Don't even, don't even put me in that position. <laughs> don't compare me. That's uh, that's too setting the bar too high. However, actually, on a personal note, I do set the bar really high. So. I demand perfection out of myself. I never reach it though. We make mistakes. So at the, it, it's a knife razor's edge balancing act of striving for perfection, but being flexible when we fail. And that's challenging, but that's another topic. And I have some other videos about business and success and that kind of thing. So check those ones out if you're interested or ask the questions right now or in the replay. I will see you in the next video. Happy New Year, everyone. I don't think this is the first live this year. No, I've done a couple already. But Happy New Year anyway. And hey, every day it's another new year. It's a good chance to start again. It's a good chance. Uh, joining my program is one good way. Subscribing to the channel is another good way. I'm going to be bringing you good info all year. And will make this the healthiest year ever. How about that? 
it's an uphill battle and uh, the rest of the society is against us, but you know, we can do it anyway. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Shina, for tuning in. Renee Gade, thank you. Jesus loves you too. Remember to open your heart chakra if you haven't yet. It's quite an experience. Well, an experience. I don't know if that's the right word. Who else? Organic Life, thank you so much for coming and asking questions and giving good feedback. Who else? Selena, you rock as well. Thank you so much for breaking the ice with the first comment. Awesome. We've got a good community growing here and on Facebook. Have an amazing day on purpose, and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, peace.